Good morning, family of faith. It brings me great joy to connect with you via video in lieu of being present with you this morning, but I'm glad that we can be together in this way. Well, before delving deeper into the book of Mark, I suggest that we just take a moment to ponder our journey thus far. Initially, we witnessed Jesus calling his disciples on the Sea of Galilee, and they responded swiftly, leaving everything behind to follow him. Uncertain of the path ahead, but certain of their call, they stopped, dropped everything, and rolled with Jesus, just as we are called to do. Next, we visited Simon's mother-in-law's residence where Jesus healed her leading to a gathering crowd and further instances of healing and demon expulsion. This causing a ripple effect of people who came to experience and see Jesus. Word spread and the question for us is, are we spreading the word of all Jesus is doing and has done for us? Last week, Jesus took a detour to heal Jairus' daughter, and a woman's touch brought her healing too. The detours are so important, and even though Jesus did not expect this woman to touch his cloak, neither do we expect a detour to happen to us. However, do we have belief that God can see us through any of the detours of life and bring us healing just as he did with this woman? Throughout these encounters, Jesus immediately extends his healing presence to those in need. Today, we're diving deeper into Mark, as I said before, and we're reading from Mark chapter 7, verses 24 through 30. This is a passage that reveals profound truths about faith and humility and the radical inclusivity of Jesus' message. We read from the Common English Bible this morning. Jesus left that place and went into the region of Tyre. He didn't want anyone to know that he had entered a house, but he couldn't hide. In fact, a woman whose young daughter was possessed by an unclean spirit heard about him right away, and she came and fell at his feet. The woman was Greek, Syrophician by birth. She begged Jesus to throw the demon out of her daughter. He responded, the children have to be fed first. It isn't right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. But she answered, Lord, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Good answer, he said. Go on home. The demon has already left your daughter. And when she returned to her house, she found the child lying on the bed and the demon gone. May God bless the reading of God's word. Thanks be to God. Now I want you to picture this moment. Jesus goes from the region of Tyre seeking a moment of solitude, a moment of peace. As we have talked about and previously looked at where we've already gone, you can imagine that he might be exhausted. Yet even in this distant place, he can't seem to escape his reputation that is built up. A Syrophician woman, desperate for her daughter's healing, comes to him, falling at his feet. Her plea is universal. It resonates with all of us because we can understand her desperation. And maybe we have felt that at certain points in our lives. The Syrophician woman is referred to in both the Gospel of Mark and Matthew, and the term Syrophician indicates her ethnic background. She was likely a Gentile, a Syrophician descendant, which encompasses the region of modern-day Lebanon and parts of Syria. And this really makes her an outsider in the Jewish context of the, of the Gospels. In both Gospel accounts, the woman approaches Jesus seeking healing for her daughter, who was demon-possessed and severely ill. She displays this deep trust in what Jesus can do, his power and mercy, and regardless of her status, she makes her way to Jesus, believing that he can do something. And Jesus' ultimate response, the very response at the very end of the particular verses that we're reading, is significant. 
At the very end, he commends her faith and grants her request, demonstrating that his ministry is not confined to any one group, but is meant for all who approach him in faith. The story of the Syrophesian woman serves as a powerful example of faith transcending cultural and societal boundaries. Her humanity, her humility, her persistence, and her audacious faith challenge us to examine our own attitudes and our biases, reminding us that Jesus loves us no matter what the limits are, and his grace is available to all who seek him. But I first want to talk about, and I, I suppose in this particular verses that we read is so crucial to me, is that the first initial response to Jesus, he initially really brushes her off. And this is the first time we see that in Mark. Every other time that we have seen anyone come to him, they, he immediately goes on the way. He goes towards them and goes towards healing. This is the first time we see that he says something that actually even could be considered rude saying that the children's needs must be met first, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I'm sure it's a very puzzling moment for this woman who's heard a lot about him. Because we don't see Jesus this way. We don't see Jesus telling us, go away. But Jesus often used such moments to challenge assumptions and reveal deeper truths. This interaction prompts us to ask, how do we act or react when we feel ignored or overlooked? Do we give up or do we persist in our faith? Now, this woman's humility, but also persistence and also her deep and profound faith are admirable. She understands that even the slightest touch of Jesus' healing power would be sufficient for her daughter's healing, and she's going to do whatever she needs to do to make that happen. So her response back to Jesus, back from this Jesus who has blown her off, is it reveals something about her trust in Jesus. Even in the face of apparent rejection, and even in that moment, Jesus commends her faith granting her the request and healing her daughter. You know, the woman's response is really astonishing. She doesn't demand recognition. She doesn't say, you've got to do it right now. Instead, she shows this kind of humility. She says, even the dogs under the table eat the crumbs of the children. In these words, she recognizes that even a small touch of power can bring profound healing. Her faith isn't shaken at all by this apparent rejection. I wonder sometimes about us, when we are rejected, do we give up? When we are rejected, do we feel hurt and slink away? Or do we come back with humility and ask, we are just as important and we believe so profoundly that something better, a healing is before us. How often do we let doubt creep into us when our prayers seem unanswered? Well, Jesus' reaction is the climax of the story, as I have said before, and he commends her faith and grants her request. And this is a lesson in the limitless scope of Jesus' grace. It's an invitation for us to examine the barriers that we build whether they be cultural or social or personal, and to see how Jesus really demolishes them. What we can glean from this encounter is that faith isn't confined by labels or borders. And this woman's persistence challenges us to approach Jesus without hesitation, regardless of where we're from, regardless of what we've been through, regardless of whatever feelings we might have, regardless of if we've even felt rejected, that we can go without hesitation and keep being persistent about a faith that we believe in. And Jesus' response demonstrates that his love is for everyone, regardless of their ethnicity or status. 
This story teaches us about the tenacious faith that we too could have. That when life's trials test our belief, will we persist like this woman? Will we have humility acknowledging the profound impact that even a crumb, even a tiny crumb of God's grace can have for us? Even a tiny crumb can make all the difference in what we're experiencing at the moment. In this world that's divided by countless issues, this story reminds us that this woman, she dove deep. She dove with everything she had to the deepest part of her faith. And she really wanted to transcend all that she knew about herself and the barriers that she had to break and all the things she needed to do and to encounter Jesus with this unwavering faith. And that when she did, she received something miraculous. Do we do the same thing? Do when we are faced with challenges, do we really go deeper into our faith or do we stay where we are? As most of you know, I was at the Convocation of the Royal Church, which is at Myrtle Beach, and I haven't really been in the ocean. I hadn't thought about that until I was actually on the beach looking out and I, you know, went through gastric sleeve. I've lost a lot of weight. And so I decided to put on my swimsuit and to really go out into the ocean. And I first have always stayed at shore. I mean, I've really never gone out in the ocean. And so I was thinking, I'm going to go out there. And I stayed by the shore and I noticed that there was a strong wind. And so these waves were coming in and I would stand kind of not on the shore but inside the ocean but not quite as deep into the ocean and I kept getting knocked over and I wasn't the only one there were others who were kind of in that middle part they weren't on the shore but they weren't in the ocean either they were kind of right there where the waves were crashing the most and they kept falling over their balance they lost their balance and I kept thinking I can't go deeper because if then I would I mean I don't even know if I'd be able to stand up or if something would happen and so I fell over like two or three times. And the third time, I think this man who had pity on me got worried I might um, not be seen again under this wave, um, reached out his hand and he pulled me up and he said, it's really strong out there. Then I thought, well, I better kind of sit back and kind of see how other people are doing because I knew people had gone deeper into the ocean. So I sat in my beach chair and I watched and I studied how other people were going past the waves of the first kind of between the shore and between the deep. We're going post past those waves and going into the ocean. And once they got there, it's as if the, the ocean became more calm. It's not that the, the waves didn't continue coming, but they were a different type. They were smoother and and all the person I do is just kind of jump up a little and then they wave in and they go with the wave instead of be crashing against it. So I worked up my courage on the second day and I said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go deeper into the ocean. And I took those steps and I got crashed down and I got back up. And then I learned if you turn sideways, you might not fall down all the time. And I kept going sideways and I went deeper and deeper and deeper. And I stood, fortunately it was only, um, I could still stand up. And I went deeper into the ocean and the waves didn't crash as hard. And it's like there was this peace and stillness. And even though there might be a big wave, you just jumped and it went with you. And I wasn't falling down anymore. And it was, it was this amazing experience. I was deeper in the ocean where I felt should have felt more scared than the shore. But it was at the shore that I actually had more falls. And I began to think about this Syrophesian woman and how deep she went. The waves were crashing near the shore for her, and yet she went deeper. She went deeper and went with the waves and experiences calm and the barriers went away because she had deep and profound faith that Jesus could do 
all that he had promised he could do to others and all that he had done previously that we've seen him do in the Gospel of Mark. I wonder if we're willing to go deeper. I wonder if we stay by those crashing waves and they keep crashing on us and we're trying to figure out how we can control it and how we can stand the right way and how we can um, move the right way and how we can, you know, someone else can maybe help us up once in a while. But how many of us will go deeper when it looks scarier, but actually is probably better for us to be out there deeper in the ocean or deeper in our faith where we can really experience the true peace and calm knowing Jesus has got us. And one other thing about going deeper in the ocean is I noticed I had to let go. I wasn't in control of what was going on. I mean, I had some control, but really I had to trust um, that I'd be okay. And in that, trusting the ocean and its own waves. Do we trust God enough to let go? Do we trust God enough to go across all of these boundaries to love one another, love God, love Jesus, follow Jesus wherever he takes us? Even when Jesus can become irritated, we can become irritated, and we still are called to go deeper in our faith. So let's go deeper. Let's dive in.